We're going to create this scene where the opacity of the shape is being controlled by the audio. The clever bit is that the opacity gently fades down. This happens because of a handy utility in Cavalry called a solver. Right, let's get started by importing our audio. To do this, double click in the assets window, select some audio and click open. Next, let's drag our audio into the composition to create a sound layer. We need to change the composition background color to black. We can do this either in the composition settings here or by dragging a color from a palette onto the viewport background like so. We'll create some text by alt clicking the text tool. This will make some text for us without us having to enter the tool. This is useful when you don't need a text box. Let's center the text both horizontally and vertically. We'll pick a new font and increase the font size. Finally, we want the text to be white. So let's drag a color from the palette onto the shape. Let's perform some setup on the sound layer. We're only interested in bass beats for this example, so let's turn all the frequencies off by clicking the button at the bottom on the right hand side of the equalizer UI. Next, let's turn one bass band back on. We'll reduce the strength to 30% on this layer as the solver defaults to accumulating values, and this will be more than enough. It's time to hook up the sound layer to the text shape's opacity, and we'll play this back to see what we've got without messing with any of the settings. As you can see, the sound is driving the opacity, however the animation is quite abrupt. When the beat stops, the opacity goes to zero without much of a fade. We can improve this using a value solver. A value solver can accumulate values over time and importantly, it can fade them back down. All we need to do to set the solver up is to change the fade mode to multiply by value. Let's plug the sound layer's output into the value solver's value attribute. Now, let's plug the value solver into the text opacity. We'll be asked if we want to replace the connection. We do. You can bypass this by holding Command on macOS or Control on Windows. Now we have the opacity fading back down after a beat. We can make the fade faster by adjusting the fade value to say 0.9. And let's watch that back. You can control anything in this way. Let's add an RGB split filter to the text and hook up the sound to the strength of this filter. Let's adjust the offsets here. We'll put minus 100 in the red offsets X, 75 on the green channels X, and minus 100 on the blue channels Y. One more change on the split filter. We need to turn off base layer. And let's play that back. We can add another layer of animation to this using a camera. To add a camera, simply click the camera button in the shelf and turn on 2.5D for the text. To set this up, all we need to do is right click on our lookout offset and choose noise behavior. Double click on the noise behavior to load its settings. We can then drag an output from the sound to the noise strength and let go. The reason we added the noise to the lookout offset is that that means if we switch to the camera tool using the button in the toolbar or the C key, we can still move about the scene as the position on the camera hasn't been blocked by the noise behavior. If we watch this back, you'll notice that not much really has changed and that's because the sound behavior strength is too low to produce the large movements we want to see here. To remedy this, we can add an attribute expression. Right click on the noise strength, click add expression and type in asterisk 30. This means multiply the incoming value by 30. We'll make one last change, and that's to turn on Transform Motion Blur for the text. And then let's play that back one last time. 